This year marks a special edition of the Gay Pride because it marks the 50th anniversary of the marches that took place on the one-year anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, which are often referred to as the first Gay Pride Parades. It's worth revisiting this important part of history of the Western world because I feel that people just don't really know anything about it. So here's a simplified overview of what occurred on one hot summer night of 1969 in New York City. But let's take it from the top. So on this night in 1969, police raided the Stonewall Inn, which was a bar located in New York City's Greenwich Village that served as a haven for the city's gay, lesbian and transgender community. At the time, homosexual acts remained illegal in every state of the US with the exception of Illinois. This meant that a bar or a restaurant could get shut down for both employing and serving gay patrons. Now, most bars were operated by the mafia and police raids on gay bars were very common. In addition, the Stonewall Inn was also selling alcohol without a license. And so this particular venue had already been targeted by the police force several times in that period, but this time was different as patrons actually fought back as they were being roughed up pretty bad and arrested. So things got uh, so hostile that the eight police officers tasked with clearing out the place barricaded themselves inside the bar and called for reinforcements. And when the reinforcements arrived, things continued to escalate until eventually the crowd of around 400 people that had gathered outside the bar dispersed. Now, tensions between the New York police force and the gay residents of Greenwich Village continued over the course of five days and five nights or so. And of course, this was a sign that the LGBTQ plus community had reached boiling point and could no longer take being treated as outcasts within society. Before Stonewall, the efforts to raise awareness for gay rights had been Pretty divided, split up into several small groups according to gender, race, class and generational obstacles. But this uprising actually served as somewhat of a catalyst for all of these groups to be united in their differences and concentrate on common efforts on establishing places for gays and lesbians to be open about their sexual orientation and sexual identity without fear of being arrested. And so on the one year anniversary of the Stonewall riots in 1970, gay activist organizations marched together, taking to the street of New York, uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. And these marches solidified their pact of unity for a greater good, a pact that would be renewed year after year until today. But it's important to say that the Stonewall riots didn't actually mark the birth of a united gay community. And John D'Amelio writes, and I quote, By the time of the Stonewall riots in New York City in 1969, the event that ignited the gay liberation movement, our situation was hardly one of silence, invisibility and isolation. A massive grassroots liberation movement could form almost overnight precisely because communities of lesbians and gay men existed. Yet, Stonewall, I believe, provided the gay community with the myth it needed to change the course of its history. First of all, just to explain, kind of put in perspective what I just said, Carl Jung suggested that mythical stories connected individuals and societies with the collective unconscious, in which all humans partake and are one of mankind's ways of interacting with the vast unseen world. The gay community up to that point may not have been completely invisible, but society sure was doing all it could to make sure that those queers and dykes stayed shut up in their closets. The myth of Stonewall ensured that they could no longer stay repressed. Secondly, uh, Jerry Williams writes that myths have an important sociological function, helping us understand ourselves as part of a wider human story and where we fit within it. They shape our aspirations and give us meaning. Therefore, they're absolutely essential in forming foundation for progress. 50 years later, the legend of Stonewall lives on, and since then, the discussions around gender and sexuality have become more sophisticated and even academicized, which I'm pretty sure is a word. Um, sometimes they can be downright confusing, and this is me being honest. Yet the fact that these discussions are so prominent within much of the Western world 
owes a lot to the birth of a cohesive core gay community, for now referred to as the LGBTQ plus community. I don't even know if you pronounce the plus, but I'm going to do it anyways, just in case. And the birth of this cohesive core gay community owes a lot to the myth of the Stonewall Riots. Oh. 